go ahead and start out with prayer. Right. Okay. Oh, dear, oh, gracious Father. Father God, we just want to thank you, Father God, for this day, Father God. Lord, we just want to thank you, Father God, for waking up for this morning, Father God, clothing our right mind. And Father God, as we push our way, Father God, to Bible study on today, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for this word, who is the master of your body. Oh, Father God, we ask, Father God, as we teach and learn together, Father God, that we ask for your anointing and your power. But Father God, that this word will fall down on good ground, Father God. And Lord, it will change our lives, Father God. It will renew our mind. And Father God, at the end, Father God, we will surely know who is the master of your body. Because this is an individual question. Who is the master of the body, Father God? So Lord, we ask, Father God, Lord, as the word go forth, Father God, that you prick every heart, Father God. And you let us examine ourselves, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you, Father God, and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Amen. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to, um, our lesson for today is going to be found on page 81. Master of your body. Um, so that's the question at the top of the lesson. And prayerfully, by the end of the lesson, we will all be able to answer that question individually. Um, once we have a clear understanding of how scripture relates to the body and the mind. So... Um, we're going to start out reading where it says um, the struggle for control, the potential for the body to be used in positive price honoring ways is tremendous. However, in reality, your body is still subject to sin and death. Okay. So what we're going to do, um, I'm going to get Angela, if you would, please read the scripture um, to the, to the uh, right side, Romans 7. 18 to, through 23. Okay. And it says, I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. For I have desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For what I do is not the good I want to do. No. <clears throat> not good I want to do. No, it's the it's not the good I want to do. No, that this is evil. Excuse y'all, because my words it look like they're running together. I do not um re repent, repeat, or let me you let me read from my Bible. I don't have my glasses on, so it just kind of <laughs> I'm in the dark. Let me just start over. Okay. Give me just a moment. Uh while Angela was doing that, I did want to reference, or um, I don't know who all remembers, but Pastor talked to us back in 18 or 19. He taught that one of his quotes was, we it's are, we have a body, we possess a soul, but we are a spirit. So just remember, um, those of you that were, um, a part of that teaching. Just think about that um, as we begin to go into um, more detail about uh, this in particular lesson. But that came to my spirit when I was um, studying what we're gonna talk about today, the struggle for control. Who is the master of the body? So um, Angela, if, you're, uh, if you have that scripture. Yeah, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I know that good itself does not dwell in me that is in my sinful nature for i have the desire to do what is good but i cannot carry it out for i do not do this do the good i want to do but the evil i do not want to do this i keep on doing now if i do 
what I do not want to do. It is no longer I who do it, but it's the sin that's living in me that does it. So I find that the law, that this law is at work, although I want to do good, even it's right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law of work in the, in the waging of war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin that is working within me. Amen. Amen. Um, thank you. So um, I have an app on my um, phone that I use. Um, I like the way it. I like the way it explains scripture in progress. and how it um talks about. Talks about the hmm, I sound like I'm just now hooking up to the. Okay. Um, and how it describes scripture. So I'm going to read 18 through 23 from the Message Bible. Um, it says, I realize that I don't have what it takes. I can will it, but I cannot do it. I decide to do good, but I don't really do it. I decide not to do bad. I'm sorry. I got a call. I decide to, um, 19, I decide to do good, but I don't really do it. I decide not to do bad, but then I do it anyway. Verse 20, my decisions, such as they are, don't result in my actions. Something has gone wrong within me and gets the better of me every time. 21, it happens so regularly that it's predictable. The moment I decide to do good, sin is there to trip me up. I truly delight in God's commands, but it's pre pretty obvious that not all of me joins in that same delight. Parts of me covetedly rebels. And just when I least expect it, they take charge. That's um, 18 through 23. So what stood out to me, if you, if you look back into the, um, the scripture in the book on 81, um, what stood out to me is uh, there are three laws that Paul ref uh, references here. He he references at the bottom of it. If you look at the bottom, he recognized God's law. He said, I delight in God's law. Then a little low, there's the law of the mind and the law of sin. So we're going to start talking about, hold on one second, y'all. I need you to um, get that water up, please. Um. Yeah, but I need you to use the um stop bag to get all the water. Okay. All right, but you can't do it right now because I'm about to. Stay. Okay. So the law of sin. I had a PowerPoint, but yeah, it's not. We gonna. I'm just gonna read it. The law of sin is the habitual tendency to sin, which works in the in our members before the sinner is. For the sinner's carnal, fleshly nature, which man is free from after the Christ connection. So the law of sin is the habitual tendency to tend to sin. It's um, our natural, uh, our natural being that results or that um, sin is the trans is the transformation is the transgression for that law. So the law of the mind is what we think, what we feel, perceive, imagine, uh, what we remember, our wills. Um, it is basically the totality of our mental awareness. Okay. One thing that I... Um, wanted to reference or talk about at the top of my lesson is the fact that the brain and the mind are two totally different things. Um, the mind resides in the brain, but the mind is not the brain. The brain has weight. The mind does not have weight. Weight. Um, 
So there is a difference when we talk about the mind and the brain. Those are two totally different things. So today in the lesson, we're referencing or talking about the mind. So Angela, if you would share um, in your own way what the law of sin is or represents. The law of sin. When we talk about the law of sin, it's basically it's our sinful nature, which is our fleshy side. You know, because the the flesh is going to go against the spirit. So if if your flesh is up, just let's think about tug of war. You know, the strongest team gonna win. So if your flesh is up, then the flesh is going to win and then you're going to do the things that you don't want to do that you know that is wrong. But because that your flesh is the one that is higher, the flesh is the one that's in control at that moment, then you're going to lead, yield to the law of the sin that's going against everything of the spirit. So it, you, you're going to yield to it. And that's where the struggle comes. Because you have the you, you have the spirit, which produces the fruit of the spirit, love, meekness, kindness, long suffering. You have that side, you know, which is our spirit man. And then you have the the lust of the flesh, which produce, you know, adultery liars, you know, it, it's not going to agree. So they're always going to be at war. And that sinful nature, if that sinful nature, if your flesh is weak, you're going to fall into that sinful nature because it could go against the spirit. And the sinful nature is you're going to do the thing like as I know that I don't, it's a sin to um let's just say it's a sin to drink i mean it's sin to get drunk but you're drinking and you're socializing but if you're not if you're weak and if that spirit takes over you then you're you're going to drink until you get drunk and that's a, that is the sinful part of it where you fall into temptation okay so Yes, it's a spirit. Wall gets flesh and your spirit. Yeah, it's a struggle. Right. And um to piggyback on that with scripture, um first John three. Um verse first John three, four, just to read it right quick. Nobody has a turn to it unless you want to. It says, everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. But you know that he appears so that he might take away our sins. And in him, it is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. And no one that continues to sin after they have known him. In other words, it's not, a, it's not something that we seek out to do. We're not looking to be sinful. However, it is a part of our nature. Um, one thing I did want to mention about the law of the mind, uh, my PowerPoint it just came up. It says, um, the law of the mind is the naturally produced images which describe your understanding of reality. But it but it does so in building, you know, on using building blocks of mental imagery or mad images which is why we think in pictures and not words so when we think about something we think about that thing in pictures that's how we process i remember um a scripture pastor taught us preached uh, back in 2019 i think but he talked about the fact that we see with our mind um so our eyes he said is a reflective lens to what we see all I, my eyes are doing is saying that is a red flower. Our mind processes what we're actually seeing. So we see with our mind. Okay. Okay. Um, may, so, I may I interject? Yes. 
as Miss Angela was sharing, and you pick it back on that, the, the thought came to mind uh, about that sin nature, uh, make no provision for the flesh. And mm -hmm. if we know if there's an areas in our life that we're weak in, we have to pay attention to that, make no provision for the flesh, because if you find yourself, as she spoke about drinking, if you know that's uh, something that you don't need to be doing, you need to make sure not to hang around those that love to drink. Make sure that you don't go and buy something and put it in the refrigerator and say, I'm not going to drink, but you already made got some there for you. So I just want to share that and make no provision for the flesh. And that would definitely help us to not to uh, fall into that sin nature and help us to control that body. Right. Yeah. Thank you. So um, as we talk about images and, and imagery, um, in Genesis, there was a spirit assigned to the flesh called desire and pleasing. If um, anyone wants to turn to Genesis 3, verse 6, um, what happened at the time, we all know about, you know, the fall of man when um, the enemy beguiled uh, Eve. But verse 6 says, so Adam and Eve had knowledge not to eat of the, the, tr the fruit, the tree of good and evil. They had knowledge of that. But when Mary, when um, Eve was beguiled, she said, it says, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food, so she saw it. And she saw that it was good for food and pleasing to the eyes and also desirable for gaining wisdom. Then she took and ate of it. So, which means, well, what that scripture kind of explains or says to me is that you know that is when sin entered man god has always given us choice um there is something i wrote down about choice um and once eve realized or recognized that she had the choice to do what god did what was against God or what he told them not to do. That is when sin entered the flesh. So at that time, flesh was assigned a spirit, desire, pleasing, things of that nature. And that is where or how we struggle, where the struggle comes in at. One thing I wrote down in studying says, God gives us freedom to choose, but the consequences of that choice can put us in captivity. So we have to remember that, yes, we have the freedom of choice and the word freedom is a direct, contradic a direct contradiction to the word captivity. So as we study and as we continue to try to grow in, in, in the things of God and grow ourselves spiritually, we have to remember that we do have a freedom of choice. God gave us that, but the consequences of that choice can put us into captivity. Um April. Yes. April. Can you hear me? Yes. What I was saying is <clears throat> just like Eve, she was coerced with that choice also. That's why you have to be very careful of your circle because some people don't want to see you doing good, following. God's word, doing other things. So she didn't even think about the tree till she was coerced and said, why aren't you eating of this tree? You can have knowledge and all that stuff. So she thought that was good, but she still had the choice not to do it. But I see, say that to say this, you have to be careful of the people you're around and, mm -hmm. you know, listening to them. Because like um, Mr. Willis said, if you know you're a drinker, why follow someone who's, who's drinking all the time? Right. Even though you don't drink, you have some people who say, oh, just go ahead on and drink. It's, it's going to be okay. Nobody's going to know. All that right. stuff like that. So you just have to be very careful. Right. Yes. Thank you, Tanya. I just want to say one quick thing about that as well. Um, as we, I can I can relate to Eve. I don't know if anybody else can, but sometimes we look at things, we we put our gaze on something that is beautiful that or something that is good. It's like too good to even pass up. 
So I'm going to take that route. But a lot of times when we we go after, when we're focusing on that thing, what we think is good, and we make the decision like Eve to 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 bite into that apple, it puts us on another path. It's, it's disconnecting us uh, further from Christ. And so I, I, I say that and say, you know, sometimes it's not even people around us. It's just what we think is good. But we do have, like Paul said, a, a sinful nature. You know, it's not that we, we just want to do bad, but I thought that was good. And, the, and in order to get past that, we're going to have to learn to submit to Christ. Because this, we're not the master of this body. You know, we can be, but we can be disconnected, pushed away. We don't want to have a, uh, don't, we don't want to not have a relationship with Christ. Um, right. So I just wanted to throw that out there as well. And what Paul is talking about, or he's describing in that scripture, is this is a universal human behavior. This is something that, that we as Christians are just going to, it's just going to be a struggle. That's what it's going to be. That's how it's going to be. Um, but we do have the responsibility of making sure that we put in the work to spend time with God, like Pastor says, um, meditate, read the word. We have to put those things in our heart. Um, it was ironic to me that <laughs> when I read the um, how the mind worked in imagery, and that's how we think an image, but if you think about it from scripture or um, as a believer, God wants us to put the word in us. We don't think in words. We think in images. But God wants us to make sure that we study the word, put it in our hearts so that we can stand the wiles of the enemy. Angela, do you have anything you want to share? Yes, I have one thing to share. Um, like going back to Eve, as Toya was saying, when she saw it, you know, that image it and she desired to have it. And that's how we look at things, is how we interpret what we are seeing. That that how we what we are seeing as we bring it in and then how we are projecting it out on how we interpret the information that we got. And that's a that's will get us into trouble a long at a lot of time because <laughs> how we perceiving stuff you know it, it could be a conversation that you can have with one another and you may say something one way but when it gets to that person you mm -hmm. give like I didn't mean I didn't mean to say it like that but see that's the way that we interpret that's the way that the other person interpret things and we do need the help of the Holy Ghost on how what we see with our natural eyes or whether the, let the Holy Ghost guide us whether that is good or whether that is bad or the discerning spirits. And that what's going to kick in through us reading the word. We begin to develop the fruits that we need to Amen. make wise decisions. And so that that's why we have to continue studying the word, renew our mind. So Amen. that we don't interpret or what we see in a different way that we will see it with our spiritual eyes. Hallelujah. That with our natural eyes. Yes. Thank you. So um, we're going, we're on page 82 now. Um, can I get someone to volunteer to read the scripture to the right of page 82, Romans 8 and 3, and then someone else, Romans 6, 6 through 7, and then Romans 8, 11 through 13. Um, we've kind of touched on um, on these scriptures, but I just want to go ahead and, um, if possible, get those. Uh, so a volunteer for Roman 8, 3, please. Our scripture passage. Go ahead. Who got that? We can go ahead. Okay. Romans 8, 3 in the margin. Uh, Page 82, what the law was powerless to do in uh, that, is that the right one? Yes, it is. What the law was powerless to do in that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful man 
to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in sinful man. Romans 8, 3. Okay, I'll pick up uh, Romans uh, 6, 6, and 7. It says, we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sins, because anyone who has died has died freed from sin. Romans 6, 6, and 7. I can read Romans 8 if you want to go, go, go ahead. Great. Yes, please. Okay, okay, sure. Romans 8, 11 through 13. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he would he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Amen. 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 Does anybody um, feel led to share anything concerning those three scriptures? Um, if not, we'll, we'll move on. But I just want to give anyone an opportunity to chime in on those on those scriptures. One of the things I see in all three of those scriptures is that there's been a provision made for us. And again, it has been stated tonight many times about we have a choice in the matter. And so mm -hmm. here it, it's given it to us in black and white. Uh, those choices can be made with the strength of what's being given to us. And we can't do it on our own. And, and God knew that from the beginning. So he's already made provisions for us. And so as we submit we can become who he called us to be. Amen. Amen. Um, in a nutshell, that, that last paragraph on page 82 says, Christ is coming to earth it, as a human being. His incarnation condemns sin. His crucifixion frees you from sin's bondage and his resurrection gives you life through the spirit. The Holy Spirit takes these three actions of Christ and makes them real in our lives. Life in the spirit applies that work as Christ to your life, work of Christ to your life. So um, the next um, part that we're going to go into, I'm going to um, share or Sean is going to share a video uh, that kind of um, depicts what we've been talking about as far as the struggle between the with the flesh. Um, I don't know how many of you have saw or seen the movie in the past, um, The Nutty Professor. <laughs> so uh, it, was a, it, was, it was a great movie, I loved it. But um, when I began to study this, this um, lesson, that's what God brought to my um, recollection is that that struggle between Buddy Love and Professor Sherman Clump. So um, just for those who may not have seen the movie, really quickly. So the movie is about um, a scientist. His name is Sherman Clump. He is um, overweight and uh, he created a um, substance or um, type of mixture that allowed him to go from 400 pounds to uh, healthy 180 pound uh, man. And that is Buddy Love. So throughout the movie, um, Professor Sherman Clump is himself as the professor. Um, he's very meek, very humble, very loving as himself. But at night, he turns into Buddy Love. And Buddy Love is not anything like Professor Sherman Clump, even <laughs> um, within himself. So um, what happened in essence up until the point that I'm going to share the video um, Professor Clump dabbling in that spirit, um, it got stronger over time, but it loved that spirit or image became stronger and it wanted to overtake um, Professor Trump completely. I mean, com com Professor Clump completely. And that's what 
the war um, between the flesh and the spirit. That's what, what the flesh is at work to do. So at this point, like I said, it is just a clip. But at this point, um, there's a very good depiction between Buddy Love and Professor Sherman Clump. Um, but as you're watching the, the um, clip, please take in what we've um, taught, what we've talked about, and um, just kind of um, plug in the, the, the what we've discussed into the video, because at the end, I would like for us to have open discussion on the things that we noticed um, at work in the script, in this um, in particular video as it relates to the scriptures we've studied, okay? It, we can't hear it. Oh, I can't hear it. Can y'all hear it? Ever, Ladies and gentlemen, for my final demonstration, look at David Copperfield. I'm about to make a 400 pound fat man. This is him <laughs> forever. Wait, I cannot let you do this anymore. This is just. Man is trying to kill Professor Sherman Club. That's it. I'm glad I brought my knife. Mm -hmm. I got my ring. Hand over the file now. Oh, sure thing has to go. But first, a short musical interlude. Hey, what has gotten into you? And where is Sherman? Sherman is gone. Oh, man. Man. <laughs> and that's a pretty good trick for a man. It is his. Oh, I'm late for an appointment. Ladies and gentlemen, say goodbye. To Sherman Clump. I hate being called hamster boy. <laughs> you just don't know when to quit, do you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> boy, it's over. Let go. Let go. If you give me a moment, I believe I try to explain. My research is, uh, well, I, when I started out, I was wanting to help people. But I became desperate and selfish. What I did was wrong. But it's who I thought the whole world wanted me to be. 
is who I thought I wanted to be. And sometimes when you want something so, so bad, you do just about anything to get it. But I learned one thing from Billy. I learned that life is not about being happy about how much you weigh. Just be happy with yourself. Sure, sorry about all this. I hope I have room everybody's meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. So um I thought uh were y'all able to hear the video it, it it cut out on my end i didn't even i couldn't even really hear a lot of it i can hear it you could hear it candace mm -hmm. yeah most of it yeah okay so if you saw the movie then you you basically know but um this kind of is an issue when we have open to having open discussion about it because what was said was um a pretty big part in the discussion but um one thing I did uh, notice is how Buddy Love, first thing he told him was, you out of time. You can't do this. Uh-uh. No, and he, he just discouraged him. And he used how Buddy Love felt about his physical being, physical self, um, to discourage him and say things about him that weakened him in the battle. He thought would weaken him in a sense. So... That is kind of what we um, go through or deal with as believers. The enemy is going to tell us things about ourselves from, from the place that we are uh, not so confident in. Um, and so the fact that in that um, clip, that's the approach that Buddy Love took really stood out to me because that's what we struggle with. That's what... The enemy does. He discourages us, you know, and tries to make us feel like we can't do something. So um, that was one thing. Did anyone else, the ones that could hear the video, Candace, was there anything else that stood out to you? Um, um, yeah. So first of all, he he must have invented Ozempics. That's how some of y'all be acting when y'all get on it. I'm just playing. But anyway, <laughs> um, I really thought that um, it was interesting how as much as he tried to fight flesh, it, it it became more and more difficult, more and more difficult. Like it was it was literally like what was explained earlier with the tug of war. It was a, a real fight against it. So it's like once you kind of let a little bit in, it's almost like a downhill battle. Right. So, yeah. Amen. Okay. Anybody else? Yes, it, it it made me think about, I think it was last year, uh, was a high school class was on the senior class trip and a young man, they was on a, a cruise boat and one young man jumped off, but he ended up dying. And it was because of who he was around, fellow classmates, all daring him. And someone spoke earlier about the people you're are around in your inner circle. And they all daring him to jump off and trying to satisfy others and trying to be something that you're not, you know, it, it can lead to destruction in, in our lives. And and that was a real life situation where that young man jumped off that ferry boat and he ended up dying in the water. Wow. Yeah. That's that's rough. Um and and then what it shows, uh, Mr. Willie, is the detriment of being around um, certain influences. You know, um, I was at the time when I was studying this lesson, I thought about um, the scripture uh, be in the world, but not of the world. So I had read something that said, imagine yourself as a Christian, a boat. You're in a boat in water. The boat represents the Christian. The water represents the world. And if enough water get in the boat, we all know what happens to the boat. So that I thought about that when you just were talking about that, Mr. Willis. So thanks for sharing that. Um, did anybody oh, notice it? April, I know another thing. So 
I I was so if we're just referencing the movie, right? His uh-huh. family was there. So a lot of times, say you're dealing with alcoholism or drug addiction and you allow that to, you know, you allow those things to take over you and not only affects you, but then it affects your family members as well. Cause you can see how his family members were like super affected. His mama fainted, um, you know, all the things, but I mean, on, in, on like in a real sense of it, your family um, can be affected by the choices that you make. It's not just a you thing. It affects those around you as well. That's Amen. right. And especially Amen. those who love you. Um, and when you re- mentioned their parents, I thought about when I was watching it, uh, you, the scripture, um, Ephesians 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual um, principalities uh, and all of that. We cannot fight this with natural weapons. The spiritual battle has to be fought with spiritual weapons. And so Buddy Love and um, Professor Crump Crump, Crump were in a um, struggle. And uh, it was funny, or not literally, but when his parents was like, "Um, I'm glad I brought my knife and I'm glad I got my my blaze. And it's like, you know, that's good. but the thing is, what you going to do with your knife? You ain't going to kill your son. <laughs> so um, I thought that was interesting because that, that to me showed that we cannot fight this war with natural weapons because the, the, those are the, our loved ones, we have spiritual struggles that, that all of us do. And so unfortunately we can't kill the spirit without, <laughs> you know, we can't kill the flat, kill the spirit without, wounding the flesh and we can wound the flesh in the way we handle a person that may be going through something it might not be as pleasant as it, as they normally are um those are weapons uh as well not just the knife and the blade that his mom and dad said they had in their purse um the weapon can be how we react or treat that person that might be um in a place of struggle you know or just being in a bad mood, you know, just not in the mood for it today or whatever. So um, we just have to be mindful of, about that as well. And um, that really brought that scripture um, to light when they said that. And I'm like, so, yeah, you can't kill your, your son, you know. April. <laughs> Can I yeah. say real quick and yeah. about the clip? And it was. It was a good clip, you know, to watch, but just to think about it um, as a Christian, uh, it was a great conflict. You know, a lot of times we're warring in our mind. So we we see the two fighting, but even as a Christian, you there there's sometimes there will be a conflict where you want to go left and but you're you're struggling to do go right, you know. Um, and so it's just uh, it uh, the to see the two to see the two it, it just reminds me of even like before you became a Christian you know you you struggle you know okay I'm gonna go to church every Sunday um, but I still haven't accepted Christ because I still want to run with uh, X Y and Z and so it just really showed the the great conflict between um, the two and what we will encounter every day yeah. <laughs> until we go to heaven. Back off of what you said, that's why every day you have to put in the full armor of God because you don't never know what day, like you're fighting something that you don't struggle with something, but you always have to be prepared to fight or be ready to fight with the worry, you know, just wear the full armor of God every day. Amen. Amen. Well, the few hand is raised. I don't know. Few, you can just jump in there. We just jump in when when we have a comment or something we want to say. Go ahead and jump in there. Well, I just wanted to say that, like, right now, for me, I'm fighting my own addiction that I've been dealing with. I, I, I went in the military in 88, and I started chewing tobacco in 89. So 35 years, I've been chewing tobacco like people eat candy. But I've been tobacco free since April twenty third of this year, and that's it's a it's a daily battle there. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Um, and I found for, for me, what's helping is I don't want to go back to day zero. Like Daisy, getting to day zero, making the decision to stop doing it was hard enough. Because Mrs. P has really been in my ear. You know, you need to quit. Um, so once I finally did, it's been times when I was like, well, I could just have a little pinch. I could just have a little bit. I won't even finish the whole can. I can just get a little bit. But that would take me back to day zero again. And I just don't want to do that. I don't want to let myself down. I don't want to let my family down. Hmm. So that struggle with the flesh is very hard. But you have to be connected. If you if you connect it, it's easier. But when you lose your connection, it's easy for the flesh to take control. Yes. yes. It's so easy for whatever that addiction, whether it's alcohol or drugs or tobacco, sexual addiction, whatever your addiction is, it's easy to be lost in it because you lost your connection. And I've been going to church. I've been preaching, but I was still chewing the back. I was like, well, I'm not doing, I'm not doing an illegal, anything illegal, you know. I'm just consuming tobacco. Right. But that tobacco is still killing the flesh from the inside. Yeah. That's right. Amen. That's right. And um, that's what Paul is talking about in the scripture that we've been talking about this whole time, just that struggle. And sometimes you know, we don't realize that um, he's speaking from a place of struggle. Paul is not speaking from a place of triumph. So those places that we've mastered and that we're good at, he's not talking about that. He's talking about the place of struggle, that thing, everybody, that thing, but a love thing was image, you know, acceptance. But everybody has a thing. So if you sit in that thing and read that scripture, that scripture comes alive. Um, and so we have to be intentional on just making, being real with ourselves and just making sure that we understand that. But the way that, the way that, that, um, works is anytime, if you don't know what that thing is, anytime you have to do something that de deducts or takes from your flesh, that's that thing. Okay. okay. So when you have, huh? I'll go ahead. I'll let you go ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was just going to say, so when you have to, um, to de deduct from, um, just yourself, just who you are, the things that you don't, you know, I'm, I'm, I just have zero tolerance for this, but in order to do that good thing, you have to take away from the flesh. That's when we struggle and have, um, have those, uh, those moments that Paul is speaking about. So, just remember that. Go ahead, uh, Lachey. I was just going, what's that? What Paul talked about, you know, he he had that thorn, thorn, thorn in his flesh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I think we all have something that we um, struggle with. It may not be, it could be, it could be anything. It don't always, may not be somebody smokes or whatever, but it could be, it can be something. It really can't. We all have a, that struggle sometimes that we we struggle with certain things, and it's not always an easy thing. Right. That's right. Okay. May I say something? Because let me. I just want to say this. I work at my job, and I work at a jail, and I hear, and I don't. I'm not a cusser, but I do cuss sometimes. I'm just gonna be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I work with a lot of people. They say a lot of stuff, and I have to deal with that on my job. They say all types of cuss words. I was like, Lord, sometimes I be thinking, like, please don't let me fall into that, you know. And I'm not trying to judge nobody or nothing like that. Right. I say a cuss word sometimes when I get mad, which is not good, but I do. <laughs> and they are constantly, I constantly hear all types of stuff at this job where I work at. And I have to deal with that. And then sometimes you can catch yourself falling into that at your job. 
you know, depending on what it is, but I hear it all the time. And it ain't it's MF this and that kind of stuff. I'm serious. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's but, a that, that's a struggle. Right. But notice in the video, um, at the time when I was editing it, I recognized that Buddy Love, I was beeping out his stuff. I didn't have to be out of the <laughs> So that's that's interesting thing that you said there. Uh, what you what were you about to say, Mister Willie? <laughs> um, as you were sharing it earlier, in that clip, we were able to physically see that struggle going on. When Elder Few spoke about his situation, his wife knew what his struggle was, but we didn't know what his inner struggle is. And, and so that leads me to back to the point that he mentioned about that connection. Uh, there's a responsibility on us as Christians, as believers, to stay connected so that we can learn to walk in the spirit. And as God gives us a, a witness, uh, a, a spirit of knowledge to see that our brother, see that our sister may be struggling with something and that we can come and stand beside them to help strengthen them. And, and, and that's that responsibility that we have to in submitting ourselves to be able to stand by those individuals where you, you may not see that physical struggle that they're going through, but they are, they are sincerely going through. Every Sunday, they may come there and sit there on the front row, and you may not know what struggle they're going through. But when God quickens your spirit to pray for that person, to talk to that person, let's be obedient. Amen. So, uh, page 83 at the end, um, it was just ironic that God gave me this in particular video, but where it says, I will, um, I think the um, the book referenced our physical body. We have a responsibility to our spirit man as far as healthy maintenance of that, but also to our body. Um, and some of us struggle with that. So I just have to read this little part right here. It says, I will intake of empty calories that do not add to my nutrition. I will begin an exercise program. I will increase the amount of rest I get each day. I will examine my eating patterns and find an alternative approach when I realize I am eating from an, from anxiety or tension rather than hunger, rather from hunger. I will monitor my intake of substance like caffeine that do not nourish me and make me it may make me irritable. I will stop using substances such as nicotine alcohol and other drugs that harm the body. So um, those are just a few things that we can um, just kind of consider and um, just be a little more mindful about it. Um, because overall, you know, we have that responsibility just, just making sure that we are um, healthy and spiritually connected and growing. Um, Angela, did you have anything you wanted to share? It's eight. Um, just really quick, um, just knowing that the enemy is going to take us where we're weak. Mm -hmm. That's what he's going to do. And yeah. with that, with that clip, if whoever, if whoever heard it, you can hear, you know, he was struggling with his weight and his self-esteem. And you notice that Buddy was using those things to keep him under. To keep him down so he went and prevail over him. So he right. kept calling him fat, you're stupid, stuff that he already, that Professor Clump already had thought about himself. So when you when you have, when you're weak in certain areas, that's what the enemy is going to take you to overpower you and to control you on that. And that's what exactly what happened in the process. He wanted to, he wanted Professor Clump this under that he can rule that body. And that's the same thing that happened with the flesh and the spirit. Yes. You feeding your flesh, it's going to prevail against your weakness. And you, everybody knows their weakness. Everybody has struggles. So that's where we have to feed that by the word we have to continue staying connected and eating the word the more you eat the strength you're going to get in your spirit man it's going to weaken that flesh 
but it, that's the struggle. That's the only way that we are going to, to survive there is we have to eat that spiritual food to keep that flesh under suggestion. Amen. And because Can I say we, something? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Can I say something? Yes, go ahead. In line with what you said, I believe that, you know, I used to smoke two packs of cigarettes a day. But I know something was wrong. I knew in my spirit that I shouldn't be smoking cigarettes. And so I just dealt more about it, pray more about it. The more you pray, the more you learn about yourself, the more you learn about things you should be doing. And in order to please God, you know that you have to do what's right. Because that's why we have Bible study, because we're constantly seeking to do what God wants us to do. And even though the struggles, we have the struggles, but there's something about our spirit that says, that's not right. You're not doing that right. And for people like us, we're going to search out and find out what it is and why it is. And why, because we want to be so close, so much closer to the Lord that we know that we have to give up something. I had to give up smoking because I know it was bad for me. I know the Lord don't want me to be smoking cigarettes. It was hard. It's hard to do anything. But if you're on your path to trying to get closer to the Lord, then you know you're going to have to give some things up that are not good for you. So that's all I want to say tonight. Amen. Amen. And how long have you been um, smoke free, um, Romeo? About 20 years. Yes. Yeah. So many other habits, you know, I could talk about all night, but okay. we won't do that. <laughs> well, that's good. Well, kudos to you and Minister Few. Um, just continue. And of course, you know, it sounds like me, you got it, uh, Romeo. But, uh, but uh, Minister Few, just continue in what you're doing. And um, you'll be 20 years from now saying that, giving the same testimony that. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so praise the Lord. I received that. that. Yeah. All right now. Um, Sean, you always, always have something for us. I, I, I what do you, let's share, share with us. What are your thoughts for, uh, about the lesson really quickly? Like you'd be yeah. telling. Yeah, just, I, I can mean a couple things. Um. I think for me, it was one of the things that Angela said at the top of the top of the call. And it was more so just surrendering, just surrendering to the spirit. Um, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That strip that scripture came to mind for me, you know, just to kind of reiterate, you know, we can't do it in our own strength. Um, but, you know, it really goes back to all of our teachings from previous weeks, previous months, even the previous book we went through. And it all goes back. And I've heard Pastor Dunson preach it and say it so many times to us. To you know, stay in the word, to pray in faith, uh, to spend time with the master, all of those spiritual qualities and things that help to spiritually strengthen our foundation. Um, all of that coincides and and you know ties in well with this as well, too. But um, but yeah, just you know, you can't you can't do it by yourself. Just you know, stay in the word and, and stay close to the, the Holy Spirit is what I kept Amen. hearing kept coming up in my spirit all night tonight. And I read this. I just want to throw it out there. It, um, it said we were bought with, with a price. Mm -hmm. So we should dedicate our body to God. We should give our body to God so he can glorify it. And that, that's when you know that you, you know, you were bought with a price. So this, it don't belong to you. You know, Amen. it belongs to him. Yeah. So, so dedicate your body to him, you know. Mm -hmm. Allow him to get the glory out of it, and that should encourage us all of all of us tonight um, to yeah. just, you know, live for Christ, live for Christ. Thank you. So, um, I think we're hey, uh, um, yes. Hey, I just want to thank everyone. Um, it's been a struggle, um, one way or another. Thank you for reminding me that the tools that I have to use, mm -hmm. not only against my flesh, but against my child's flesh as well. So we're gonna keep fighting. And just like you said, use the tools that we have. And I thank you. And I needed that refresher because sometimes, we, well, for me, I was going in a different direction, mm -hmm. you know, but thank you for reminding me. And I needed this class today. Pastor say he missed me, but I've always been here and just been quiet. 
<laughs> I really needed this tonight. And I thank you so much for bringing it up front. Thank God. That is so good. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Well, thank y'all so much for y'all's time. I appreciate it. I have enjoyed, um, Angela and myself have enjoyed teaching this lesson. I enjoyed studying the lesson. I enjoyed that time with God, just allowing him to pour into me so that I can pour out into you all. That is a blessing. Um, and it was a struggle. That's when it was one of my struggles. I don't say things. <laughs> I'm very quiet uh, when it comes to things like this, but um, I'm working on that. And I thank God for being patient with me because I've been working on it for years, 20 or more years. So <laughs> he's been very patient with me. So I thank y'all for your time. I thank y'all for your input. I love y'all. Um, <laughs> Angela or Pastor, did you have anything else? Um, just, I'm just grateful and uh, just learning and being taught and enjoying seeing you utilize the gifts that God has given you. It's just a beautiful thing to see uh, uh, the personal testimonies. We thank God for that. We, we, we understand how important testimony is to our deliverance. And anytime you share of your vulnerabilities, your personal testimony with the family, it blesses all of us. So, uh, I certainly want to thank those who think it's not robbery to do that, but are led by the Spirit to share. And you, it's just, I, I don't want to go back into this rehashing everything that has been said, but you just so on point, really. Uh, this is the reason why we, as believers, have to stay so in tune with God. Sin in our flesh is natural to us. It's in our nature. We cannot have victory over our flesh without being connected to God. And it helps us to understand what we witness in the world. People who are not connected to God, they are led by their flesh. And when you are led by your flesh, you will do anything. Amen. So it helps you to appreciate why people lie, why people kill, why people steal, why people hate. And that's why you and you understand that in the spirit realm. So you don't let that bog you down and, and depress you in your spirit when you see all of this craziness and madness going on in your world. You, you you know that these people don't have a real connection with God. So they, they can't really even help themselves, mm -hmm. you know? So what we do as believers, we just pray for them. Mm -hmm. our, 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 our governmental leaders, we that's all we can do is pray for them because they don't have any real connection with God. So obviously they're not gonna, they're not gonna be concerned about other people. They're, they're not going to love other people. They're not going to they're not going to provide for other people the things that they're supposed to be doing as our governmental leaders. They, 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 they cannot do that because they operate out of their flesh. So you don't let what happens and what you see weigh you down, get you depressed. But again, for us as believers, this is why we have to stay so connected to God. Amen. Prayer in worship because we can't control our flesh either. Scripture says the tongue is uncontrollable. So we know we can't control that. And then the things that we do, Paul said, we even when we want to do the right thing, our flesh naturally tends to do the wrong thing. But if we are the question for day three, and I think he, I like the way he posited in the question, who is the master of your body? See, if you're clear about that, then the Holy Spirit will empower you to get victory over your flesh. If you're clear about that, see, but we have a lot of Christians and a lot of believers who don't under, who don't realize who is the master. Yeah. 
who is the master. See, if you know that God is the master, the Holy Spirit is the master, then that forces you to stay connected to the master. Amen. To the one who can give you the ability to win over your flesh. And even then, you're not going to win all the time, every day, 24 hours a day. But that's why we have repentance. When we do fall short, God knows our heart. As long as we know who is the master and, and we continue to do the spiritual practices, as you have said, that keep us strong. I like, I use the analogy of, of, of eating meals. You've heard me use this analogy many times. If you feed your flesh three meals a day and snacks in between, that's 21 meals a week that you give your flesh. If you only feed your spirit once a, a week, like most people do when they come to church, that's what they call feeding their spirit once a week. You don't spend no time with God doing every day. You don't spend time in the word. You're not praying without ceasing. You're not listening to, to, to spiritual stuff. If your flesh eats that much a week and your spirit eats that less a week, that's not rocket science, which is going to be a, have more power over your decision making. Right. I mean, that's that's I mean, that's common sense. Mm -hmm. If your flesh is that much stronger than your spirit, then when it comes time for you to make decisions about how you're going to act and behave and live, your flesh is going to dictate that. Mm -hmm. So people who don't have a real connection with God, their flesh is dictating how they live. So don't, 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 don't be alarmed about what they do. Just pray for them. Brother Willie acknowledged that when we see people who are in that condition, controlled by their flesh, if God leads us to speak to them, don't be afraid to do that in love. But the one thing we can do is pray for them. Just like we pray for each other to continue strong in God's purpose for our life. We have to pray for, for those who don't have a real relationship with God, that they may connect with God and God can use us to be a catalyst to help them connect with God. So this was just so good. It was just so good. I'm, I'm going to, at, at the end of the session, when, when all of our teachers are done, I'm going to, I'm going to go back and do some recap, uh, some general recap over all of the lessons, but I'm just enjoying it just being blessed. Thank you so much for putting your time and your effort and your prayers and allowing God to use you to be a blessing to the family. So thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. So if um, if, if, um, if nobody has anything else, does anybody else want to share anything before we um, pray, pray out? Angela, pray us out, please. Does anybody else have anything? All right. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. All hearts, minds are clear. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you, Father God, for this word on today, Father God. Lord, we just want to thank you, Father God, for not just being hear of the word, but do of the word, Father God, in the name of Jesus. That, Lord, that we will feed our spirit with the word of God, Father God, to weaken the flesh, Father God. Lord, we will pray, Father God, to, Lord, that you will deliver us out of all evil, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Because, Lord, we do and realize and know that this flesh does no good thing. And, Lord, it's contrary to your word, Father God. So, Father God, that we will not be led by the flesh, Father God, but be led by the spirit, Father God. Mm -hmm. and Lord, you say that we must worship you in spirit and in truth, Father God. Amen. Amen. And, Father God, we ask, Father God, that you give us that time, Father God. Make room for you, Lord, to sup with the Father. Yes, Lord. Help us, Father God, to walk. By the spirit and not by the flesh, Father God. Yes, Lord. And Lord, when we fall, Father God, it will not hold us in condemnation, but we will get back up, Father God, and run back to you, Lord. Amen. But Lord, we ask that you keep us, Father God, mm -hmm. near to thee, Lord. Yes. 
keep your arms wrapped around us, Father God. Yes, Lord. Lord, we just want to thank you, Father God. We thank you for the word renewing our minds, Father God. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that all is well, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With our souls. And Father God, we bless each and every one in our families, Father, on the day. And Father God, that we could be true disciples for you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Father. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Angela. Amen. Good night. Bless you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night.